Malcolm, the civil rights bill is with us now. What will it mean? Well, I'm not very excited at all over the civil rights bill, primarily because it's a law, and the Supreme Court desegregation decision was also a law that was handed down by the highest court in the land 10 years ago, and they haven't been able to implement it even here in New York City or any other city in the North much less try and implement it in the South. And if they can't implement this, this single law that was handed down by the highest court in the land, I'm very doubtful that they'll be able to enforce any of the, law that's, any of the laws that are now uh, on the books in this uh, recently passed the civil rights legislation. You don't think it's even a step then? No, I don't think it's any step. Uh, the Constitution of the United States automatically is supposed to be sufficient to protect anybody who's born here who's a citizen. And if the Constitution uh, uh, includes all of those who are born here, I don't see why additional legislation is needed when it comes to the rights of the Negro. If the Polish people and the Hungarians and the Russians and others who come here as refugees don't need civil rights legislation in order to be recognized as citizens, why it's a farce to make Negroes think that civil rights legislation is needed to get us recognition as citizens. Well, what would you suggest be done then to, to let a Negro go wherever he wants to in the South and get the, all the other benefits that the bill provides him? You can't do anything by legislation. It takes uh, uh, education. The white man in this country needs to be re-educated re uh, so that his behavior pattern toward non-whites will change. And the black man in this country also needs to be re-educated so our behavior pattern and attitude toward ourselves will change. And once a little educating is done on both sides, you'll probably find that that in itself will do more to bring about the spirit of brotherhood than all of the legislation that's designed to force the two together. You can't legislate brotherhood. That brotherhood comes about through understanding, and understanding is created through education. Now, Malcolm, on one side you're talking about brotherhood and education, and on the other side you're talking about guerrilla movements in the South. Where do you stand? Both of them are educational. Uh, we, we demand our right to have access to equality of opportunity to anything that this country stands for as long as we're born here and come within the confines of the Constitution that governs this country. Now, in line with that, we feel that we have the right to defend ourselves whenever we take uh, measures to participate as, as citizens and unlawful elements like the Ku Klux Klan get in our way. We think the two positions are consistent. In fact, one complements the other. Malcolm, tell me why you want to send guerrillas to Mississippi. Well, Professor Mark DeWolf Howell of the Harvard Law School, uh, speaking for 29 other law professors, pointed out that the United States government could intervene by law in uh, the state of Mississippi by sending troops. And since the Attorney General uh, and others in the federal government have pointed out uh, that they don't intend to send federal troops in themselves to protect the lives and the property of the Negroes who are being brutalized down there. It's our intention to try and organize the black people or the American Negroes in this country into self-defense units in that area, in areas where the government is unwilling or unable to defend our people. We will defend our people ourselves. Just what exactly would these units do? Eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth situation? Well, as long as it is an intelligently organized uh, effort that is being made, uh, the discipline involved will keep our people acting intelligently and discriminately. But if something isn't done in this country to organize Negroes who are fed up with this nonviolent, turn the other cheek approach uh, in a sensible direction to bring about the halting of this uh, brutality that we are constantly the victims of, then Negroes are going to react in a disorganized way in an unintelligent way and an indiscriminate way when it comes to retaliation. So we actually think that we're doing more to uphold the law and protect in protecting the lives and property of our people in an organized way than to sit around and let a disorganized uh, effort uh, ev develop, develop. What would you do in a specific case, say, of the three missing boys right now? Well, one of the things I would do if I wanted to find them, I would look in the police station in uh, Mississippi. And when you think in terms of the Ku Klux Klan uh, as being the ones who are, who are responsible for them being missing, then the, in the state of Mississippi, most of the policemen belong to the Klan. The two uh, organizations are uh, interwoven with each other. 
So we would look in some of the police stations or start questioning the police. There's no need to question the people out there in the street. The police know more about where they, these persons are, whether they're dead or alive, than anyone else in Mississippi. When you say you'd question the police, do you really think you'd get them to talk to you? No. So it means that we've reached the point where talking is a waste of time. What would you do? It has become necessary for the American Negro, of which there are 22 million, to go on record to let the world know that since the American government in Washington, D.C., has proven its unwillingness or its inability to protect us in the state of Mississippi, the black man in this country is obligated to take it upon himself to organize and put forth the efforts that are necessary to give our people the protection that has not been forthcoming from the government. Well, the alternative is that the federal government, uh, which is supposed to protect the rights of Negroes, the same as it protects the uh, rights of whites, must take the responsibility of recognizing the fact that the state of Mississippi is part of the United States and is under the jurisdiction of the United States government, and therefore the United States government is responsible for all of the violence, the bloodshed, and brutality that takes place in Mississippi. In, in the past, as long as our people have been the victim of brutality, the government has dragged its feet. So we have to create a situation where we can retaliate and create a situation that will force the United States government to occupy the state of Mississippi and do for us in protecting us as she has done for others while trying to protect others. This is your goal? We would not say. I would not say. Would they need training? Oh, yes. Anytime you are sending people uh, against an enemy on the front lines, they need training. And uh, the only criticism that I have of the students who have been sent in, uh, I think that the organization that sent these students in to uh, show our people there how to become involved in this uh, voter's registration is a great step. And the whites involved should be given credit as, as well as the Negroes who will receive the benefit of it. All of them should be given credit. But I believe that they made a tactical mistake in sending these young people in and not showing them how to defend themselves. Because to send them in this area with no idea of how to defend themselves against the brutal attacks of the Klan is equivalent to sending soldiers on the front lines in Korea or in South Vietnam or Laos. And that enemy over there is nowhere near as vicious as the Klan and the White Citizens Council and other racist elements in this country. You mentioned that you would use white people to infiltrate the Klan to gather intelligence. Yes, in my uh, speaking engagements around the country on the various campus, I have found many young whites who were sincere in their desire to see an end brought to racism. And uh, many of them are now actively involved in SNCC and the nonviolent approach. But those same ones who are involved in the nonviolent approach would become involved in any approach that they thought would bring an end to racism. And I think that most whites as well as blacks can see that uh, from experience in Mississippi and, and other parts of the South, the racist element there are too morally bankrupt to react uh, in a positive way to the nonviolent approach. Could you trust a person who belonged to the group that you used to call the blue-eyed devils with information? When Could I you trust his information? When I referred to them as the blue-eyed devils, I was speaking for Elijah Muhammad. When I referred to them as a race of devils, I was speaking then uh, uh, for Elijah Muhammad. And uh, I don't speak for Elijah Muhammad today. In fact, if Elijah Muhammad is the leader of the black people in this country, as he professes, then he should be concerned with the brutal treatment that our people are receiving in the state of Mississippi and send his well-trained fruit of Islam down there to protect our people instead of sending them out here in the street to attack former Muslims who don't want to go along with his program anymore. You would trust a white man's information, though? Well, I have gotten information from whites in the past, even while I was a member of the black Muslim movement, that I found to be pretty authentic. Malcolm, what's your ultimate goal? My ultimate goal is to uh, see, to make whatever contribution I can toward bringing about complete freedom, justice, and equality for black people in this country. Com complete respect and recognition as human beings. And the uh, organization of Afro-American unity, which we've now formed, has that as its aim, to lift the struggle for freedom of the Negro in this country 
from the level of civil rights to the level of human rights and carry out a program which will be designed to make us uh, recognized and respected as human beings, as members of the human family, wherein our human rights will be respected, and then we think our civil rights, the recognition and respect of our civil rights, will be automatic. Do you feel that you personally are struggling now to retain your role as a Negro leader? I have never uh, strived to retain or occupy any role as a Negro leader, and I think that my own uh, manner of representing Mr. Elijah Muhammad uh, was such that everyone uh, agreed that I submerged my own uh, personality completely uh, out of respect for his leadership. And so I wasn't trying to be a leader then, and I'm not trying to be a leader now. I'm one of 22 million black people in this country who is absolutely impatient and disenchanted and fed up when, it come, when uh, I have to look at the television every night and see police dogs be, uh, biting our people or see policemen clubbing our people or see our women and our children being washed down the sewer with fire hoses simply because they want to exercise their rights in a society which says that they are citizens. Can you give me some specific ideas of what you would do? No. I wouldn't give any specific ideas of what should be done or how we would go about doing it. But I can say that our people have been in the armed services. We have many Negroes in this country who know every uh, type of fighting tactic available in war, uh, imaginable in warfare. And if they can go into Korea and in South Vietnam and Laos and train others in guerrilla warfare, they can come right over here and train our own people in uh, defense tactics that can bring an end to this uh, Klan-like uh, brutality. Instead of uh, our people continuing to let the Klan and these other racist elements intimidate us uh, with murder and, and uh, organized brutality, uh, if the Klan knows that we will retaliate, that we can retaliate and will retaliate and do unto them as they have been doing unto us, we feel that that in itself will be sufficient to hold them in check. And if the government doesn't want this type of situation to, to develop, then it is up to the United States government to answer the plea of James Foreman and the other uh, Negro leaders in the South and give them federal troops to protect the lives and property of our people. Those from outside would go in for the purpose of uh, organizing the self-defense units. Uh, and one of the steps in that organization involves, involves making the Negroes in Mississippi see that they are within their rights to defend themselves rather than always uh, allow themselves to be the victims of the attacks by the Klan and the White Citizens Council and other racist elements. When you say defend themselves, what sort of methods of defense are you advocating? By any means necessary. Our goal is to force the United States government to take its role as a government and take its responsibility as a government and occupy the state of Mississippi and give our people the protection that they cannot get under the police system that now exists in that state.